no one knows what they are doing. My name is Sabrina Chaudhry and I am the co-founder of Stay Silent PVD. We are an events and marketing agency based here in Providence, Rhode Island. COVID-19 has obviously affected everything across everybody's lives, but uh, specifically in our business, um, we saw the effects pretty quickly. We own a nightclub in Providence that we just opened in January of 2020 called Crib. And um, pretty quickly, once the declaration of emergency happened, we were not allowed to bring together groups of larger than 100. And so that lasted for a weekend. And so we ended up doing one event uh, in that time frame, we also weren't allowed to have live entertainment, DJs, charge a cover. There was a lot of different uh, rules that kind of were given to us within a day. And so we pivoted for that weekend. We hosted one event under those terms. And we're very lucky that we were able to even have that one day because that was the only event we had for the entire month of March based on uh, the fact that things got a lot stricter after that. So since that point, we have completely closed down our club until we're all holding our breath to see when it reopens. I think there is something to be said about being first generation American and a child of an immigrant in this where there's some communal parts of it that I think were are really just the same. As a small business owner of color, I've already experienced so much of the gaps in banking and the gaps in funding for my business. I have a great credit score. My partner has a great credit score. We have very little debt. Um, we both own properties and we could not get a loan to open our club. And even with Trade Pop-Up, our nonprofit, we've never received a grant. Um, I think part of that is not reaching, not knowing how to access those funds, but also because so much of funding is done in a very singular way, specifically leaves out businesses, nonprofits, and organizations of color. And so even the idea of how much grace I felt in this time where people are actually asking, how can we help you get funding? You know, we needed funding every year we've been a business and we've never received it. So in some ways it's been eye-opening to receive grace when we are in a bad situation because we have been in bad situations many times and have never received grace and have never had things or have rarely had things um, explained and boiled down and streamlined in the way that they are right now things that I recognize from this circumstance is that we need a lot more empathy in general. And I've seen so much of that in this crisis in response from government officials, from you know places that I, I may not necessarily have felt that that was coming from previously to this. But I think recognizing that most small businesses in our state are two weeks away from financial panic should be extremely alarming for all people. Yes, the arts and gig workers and DJs are feeling it, but so are most retailers, so are most childcare providers, so are pretty much every small business industry that our state has. No one knows what they are doing. If I, I've seen a lot of industries crumble with 15 days of being out of business. I think that just generally preventative measures may be assessing how we pay tipped workers, how we pay gig workers, so that they can have a stream of income in which they can financial plan it. Um, it's very challenging to financially plan and be smart when you are not being paid properly. Um, and I think that's something we see in everything. When we talk about living wages, the reason we are advocating for living wages is not because uh, you cannot pay your bills at $12 an hour. It's because you cannot plan at $12. Like there's so many things you can't do with even a dollar less an hour. So I think across the industry talking about, you know, how do we support pay raises? How do we support, especially in industries where there's liquor being sold, um, where the margins are so high, you know, there should not be a reason that bottles of champagne are being sold for $350 and the DJ got paid $150. I think preventative measures is just a big challenging thing because I'm not seeing, like I think it's access to support um, more consistently. So one thing obviously that's happening right now is commerce supporting uh, small businesses, developing websites, developing online selling sales platforms, 
Um, it's something that's being offered really consistently right now. And I know that's something that we are able to do either generationally or because we've spent the time and energy to learn those things. But I do think there's a lot of businesses that are just not technically up to speed to function digitally. One of our goals as a state should be to get everybody the digital resources that they need or get all of the small businesses the digital resources that they need so that in our changing world, they are able to still connect and communicate in times like this.